Well, I knew they were full of shish, shish kebabs. Well, again, another bombshell breaking news story that happened yesterday that just turned out to be flat, outright, not true. Of course, all of this is done on purpose to push the divide and conquer agenda to push you further away from the truth so you don't really see the reality of the situation right in front of your eyes. And that's why in this video we're going to be talking about that story, what just happened to Roger Stone, woke people being privileged only to get medical care in the United Kingdom now, more updates about the coronavirus, as well as Michael Bloomberg's really nasty illicit ties to, of course, not only Harvey Weinstein, but of course, Jeffrey Epstein himself. That plus a lot more on an independent media organization that survives mainly because of, uh, you know, merchandise. Check out our new merchandise. This shirt just came out right now when we decided to call a spade an actual spade. And this is why we have new CIA Pete 2020 t-shirts with the tagline, quote, put a real asset in the White House. If you want to snag this t-shirt while it's still up there and the deep state hasn't taken it down, definitely click the link in the description right now. And your purchases help keep independent media alive. Now, of course, the biggest story that just broke right now that everyone is talking about that is trending today is, of course, the news that Roger Stone was sentenced to more than three years in jail after a very politically divisive trial of uh, a pretty wacky political commentator and Donald Trump confidant, Roger Stone, who was charged for, you know, all the things that politicians do on a daily basis, but don't get in trouble for. Yeah, he got in trouble for that by the same DOJ that never prosecuted Jeffrey Epstein. And of course, with this case being so politically charged, many people expect the U.S. President Donald Trump to issue a pardon of Roger Stone after this latest sentence. Now, even though Donald Trump has personally intervened in this case and has given off a very strange sets of pardons already, things are still uh, very unclear in this situation since, of course, Donald Trump has not issued pardons for officials like Michael Flynn and, of course, Julian Assange, who of course many people expected him to do so for. And the situation with Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, only got more complicated and the situation only turned out more disastrous for him as Donald Trump just assigned and selected his new spy chief, his new acting director of national intelligence to be no one other then Richard Greenell, the man who personally worked out the deal with Ecuador to have Julian Assange arrested when he was still ambassador to Germany. Yes, the man who personally negotiated with Ecuador and the United Kingdom to arrest Julian Assange under Donald Trump's presidency has now been named the new acting spy chief for the United States government. And if that situation couldn't turn out any more worse than it already did, we had more breaking news yesterday that was trending. Number one, coming from news organizations like the Daily Beast, which, by the way, Chelsea Clinton is on the board of, claiming that Donald Trump allegedly offered to pardon Julian Assange if he, quote, this is according to The Independent, covered up Russian interference in U.S. election. And again, we saw very similar headlines from news organizations all over the world claiming that this was a major bombshell, that this proved somehow that Russia was... And, and again, uh, I, I, this is so tiresome. And I remember everyone calling it out. I was about to report on it in yesterday's video, and I said, wait, let's wait a little bit. Let's, let's just wait a little bit, because the story didn't add up. Because Julian Assange, for one, many times publicly spoke about the DNC hacks in question here not coming from state actors. So why would Donald Trump offer him a pardon about something that he already said previously before? Many people accused Donald Trump and WikiLeaks of a, of a massive cover-up of Russian election interference. And of course, um, the true story of how this, quote, bombshell breaking news story came out of uh, was the fact that an ex-congressman requested information from uh, WikiLeaks, which he said he was going to then, after acquiring this information, 
tried to ask the president for a pardon, and again, nothing ended up happening here. This whole bombshell break, this whole, this whole thing was just all bunk. And again, proven not to be true. But if there's one truth in this whole WikiLeaks Julian Assange story, it is that journalism should not be punished. And that's exactly what Julian Assange did. And for this man who is not a citizen of the United States to now face a massive extradition treaty, hearing to send him to the United States for the crime of telling us the truth about our government, I mean, it is just an absolute injustice. And sadly, something that Donald Trump is participating in since under his watch, Assange was arrested. The person responsible who for his arrest was promoted, and then when publicly asked about Assange and WikiLeaks, Donald Trump says, oh, I, I don't know anything about WikiLeaks or Julian Assange anymore. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but it was interesting to see the likes of Mike Cernovich and others say because of this half-baked story that came from Assange's lawyer that they would no longer be supporting Assange. But again, just on their own merits here, just on the principles of this case, it is worth fighting for journalistic freedom, in my opinion. Now, another cockamamie crazy news coming from the United Kingdom. We just got an announcement that the National Health Service in the United Kingdom established a new rule where they could now not only deny medical care against patients who were verbally aggressive and physically violent towards them, which is rational. You can't treat someone who, again, is, is actively hurting you, but they added new provisions to this already existing law that specifically protect them from helping and serving people who um, allegedly harassed them, bullied them, discriminated them, or were in some way, shape, or form homophobic, sexist, or racist, or even made any of those remarks, which according to many people on Twitter, you sneezed the wrong way. It's some kind of microaggression that pissed people. I remember there's, there's someone crying and crying about not getting able, not being able to get a haircut because they don't know their gender. I mean, who's gonna be making the rules about who is quote homophobic, sexist and racist. And of course this is gonna wa wa work out very great with of course the coronavirus spreading all over the world. Yeah, this is this is a brilliant strategy here uh, by the UK medical <laughs> services here, especially when we're dealing with something that many people are calling an international pandemic. But yeah, you know, woke culture and politics matter more more than, you know, come on. Anyway, continuing on with the news, the Chinese virus is spreading, of course, most devastating China not only economically, but personally, socially, all over the world, with some reports coming in of cases of this virus spiking, as of course, we still don't know a lot of the things that are happening because of the big, bloated, bureaucratic, communist Chinese state that keeps lying about everything. Now, moving forward in other viruses, we of course have the billionaire pedophiles, which there's there's a freaking lot of them. But the latest updates we have with Jeffrey Epstein's mentor, Les Wexner, the man behind Victoria's Secret, the main company that Jeffrey Epstein was using to abuse and hurt women and children under, since many people viewed Jeffrey Epstein as the quote owner of Victoria's Secret. All of course, because of his close connections to Les Wexner. And again, uh, the, the fact that this man hasn't been uh, investigated, the fact that the victims, the thousands of victims of Jeffrey Epstein still haven't seen justice, but yet this political clown is is, is persecuted against. I mean, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Again, not a fan of uh, Roger Stone, but uh, it's egregious what happened to him and the resources investigating him, going after him, should be used against the victims that are in the thousands from individuals like Jeffrey Epstein, Les Wexler, Gislin Maxwell, and other people who are still out there free in the world. But Les Wexler, the man connected to Victoria's Secret, looks like he will be resigning soon, as of course he just sold 55% of his stake in Victoria's Secret for $525 million, as everyone, of course, is expecting him to step down after a lot of the pressure from the public scrutinizing him for his participation 
in Jeffrey Epstein's operations. Meanwhile, there's another statement released by Gislin Maxwell, a person, by the way, that many victims saw as the person above Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, that person that is still free, we got a quote from her saying that, what does all of this matter now? And that what are people are trying to accomplish, trying to investigate her because quote, as she said, Jeffrey is dead. Again, trying to shift the entire a operation on what many people have seen as the fall guy here, Jeffrey Epstein, and the main pimp, the main procurer of children, and the person also accused of abusing these children, Jocelyn Maxwell, is still out there free in the world, hiding somewhere. Some people are saying Israel with her refusing to be served legal documents as many of the victims are trying to sue her right now. And as all of this is happening, the authorities are twiddling their thumbs, going after freaking spider I mean, come on. But hey, it's all one big club and you're not in it. As we've documented many times before, billionaire Michael Bloomberg's connection not only to Gislin Maxwell, but also Jeffrey Epstein, with, of course, Epstein saying that him and Bloomberg were very close friends, and it, and it shouldn't surprise anyone, especially with Bloomberg also being friends with Harvey Weinstein, who was friends with all of them, and it is being just revealed that Bloomberg and Harvey Weinstein, another person facing very harsh accusations of abuse against him, shared 15 years of friendship with Harvey Weinstein donating and backing Michael Bloomberg when he was mayor of New York, while Bloomberg gave him tax credits and other perks for his supports. Do you see how the megalomaniac, super rich, abusive monster system works? It works through the system that many people call government, but in reality is mafia that breeds the worst slimiest, most disgusting creatures of them all. And again, very interesting to see the presidential debate unfold yesterday, and yet no one questioned Mayor Bloomberg about his connections to Gislin Maxwell, Jeffrey Epstein, or Harvey Weinstein, all puppets of the establishment. But after that just extremely painful display of our idiotic political discourse that included nothing about foreign policy, there is one clear decisive c conclusion from yesterday, and that is that Michael Bloomberg lost and was essentially pummeled by everyone on stage last night. Andrew Yang, the former presidential hopeful and now newly acquired CNN host, gave his hot take of the night before the debate started. That uh, is perfect for CNN, with him saying that, quote, this was going to be Michael Bloomberg's debate. He's new and rising. He's going to fit right in at CNN uh, with his news analysis. I mean, seriously, do, do you have to have a lobotomy? To, 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 do you have to go on to, under MK Ultra mind control abusive programming uh, to work at CNN? I mean, seriously. He, there were some things that he said that were rational, a lot of things that weren't rational when he was running for president, but man, what a state of stooge. And again, it, it shouldn't be a surprise that Michael Bloomberg, who's buying the election, who's only spending a very small percentage of his money so far, is hated by everyone. And, and, and essentially, he's a dictator calling for an oligarchy of an already bastardized, corporatized system that was bought and sold by cronies like him. And still, that is not enough for this man, and he wants more power and control over your life. Which uh, the majority of people, unless they're being uh, just total shills and being paid by him, an estimate of $2,500 a month to say nice things about him, unless they're just total sellout soulless pigs, it's pretty clear no one likes this man because he's unlikable. He's an ass douche. And it's interesting to see just the constant scaring, screaming, fear mongering about Russian interfering in our elections when this man is clearly buying a large portion of the election for himself and yet there's still no uh, outrage about it when, of course, the big companies and conglomerates and advertising agencies are collecting all the money. And there is a lot of social media manipulation surrounding Bloomberg, with him even putting out fake videos that are highly edited to, of course, other 
sellout meme pages that truly are the bastardization of our society that claims that they are against fake news, that claims that they're for democracy, when in reality they're just a bunch of corporate whores like we've been calling them out to be from the very beginning. You definitely can't teach an old dog new tricks. And the same goes for our corrupt system that is being abused and used by the worst elements of human society. That's my take on it. And that's not optimistic, but hey, at least it's honest, right? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. If you think I'm wrong on anything, if you think I missed an important story that I should have covered today, well, let me know in the comment section below. I'm only here because of your support, because of you supporting independent media and because you guys still do love you guys thank you again so much for watching stay tuned for more here on we are change.org